this is this is great. And again, just uh, as as an indicator of the types of things that are in this collection, uh, a Cherokee folk tale uh, told by a Cherokee uh, storyteller, illustrated by a Cherokee artist, and brought out by Dial Press, a major New York publishing house. You know, again, this sort of thing happening in the second half of the 20th century, the late 20th century, just wouldn't have happened in the early 20th century uh, or before. And Augusta Baker and the work she did in New York in the 1950s and 60s uh, is really a part of that shift and that change. Uh, there's a direct connection between the types of materials that children have access to now and the work that she did. There's a story about Christmas. He wanted to have the the uh, true Christmas tree, which was with lit candles on the tree. And next door to the library was the fire station. Oh, and yeah. so they knew they couldn't do this, yes. but they prevailed on it and whatnot. So you know how things were, you know, people trying to work together. But the firemen stood on watch where they could look out of the window to the fire station and see this tree when it was lit. And they stayed there and watched the tree <laughs> to make sure they could run in and put it out if it did catch fire. But she got her <laughs> she got candles, her candles lit. lit on the tree, you know, because that's that's how they how traditionally they had Christmas trees. They were little candle holders on there. That's I don't know how many houses burned down as a result. <laughs> a lot, from uh, what I remember uh, yeah. reading. Uh -huh. That's a wonderful story. Mm -hmm. She also used to practice on her stories on me and my stepfather, Gordon, who was born and raised in Harlem. I mean, he was the typical Harlem person of the 1920s and 30s and 40s. And our next door neighbor, Bill Andrews, who was a World War II veteran who, who uh, uh, fought in the Pacific Campaign. Now, there's the three of us sitting there, and she would practice her stories on us. And I remember uh, Bill would say, uh, tell another one. <laughs> And that is the grave of President James Ryan McKissick. I would say the most beloved president in the university's history uh, because when he died unexpectedly in 1944, the student body petitioned the, the trustees to allow him to be interred on campus. No one else has ever received such an honor and I can't imagine a scenario where anyone else would. So we think at the Carolinana, we think that it's very appropriate that he is buried outside our walls because he helped establish the Carolinana collections at the university. He said he was tired of losing these special, wonderful historic materials to literary bootleggers from outlandish parks. <laughs> uh, because prior to the establishment of the Carolinana, well, we had, there were collections at UNC Chapel Hill and other northern and some other private collectors as well, but there was nothing really here really focusing on South Carolina's own materials. Uh, so he helped get us established. The Carolinana was transformed into a special collections library under his presidency. Jumbo, Jumbo, Jumbo Sana, Jumbo. Jumbo sana jumbo, 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 sana jumbo, sana. One of the things I remember learning about the amazing Augusta Baker was that she liked to say and teach that storytelling was one of the best ways to connect people to books. Once upon a time, there was a little rabbit who lived so happily with his mama. 